Okay, let's go ahead and get started. Um, good afternoon, everybody. My name is Ben Follett, and I am the U.S. Product and Marketing Manager uh, for SIA in the United States. Um, I will introduce a little bit later uh, a friend of mine and a customer of ours, uh, Nathan Bissonette, who is a senior engineer at Fraser Industrial Company. And today, uh, we are together going to present a little bit about SIA Engineer with a focus on putting together pal calculation packages using uh, what SIA Engineer calls the engineering report. And so before we jump into the bulk of our uh, content, I want to just talk a little bit about the Nemenchek Group, uh, who owns SIA, uh, for those of you who aren't familiar with us. Uh, the Nemenchek Group, obviously, is a worldwide global company um, with operations in 40 different countries. Uh, we're primarily known for our different brands, um, and you can see here, these are the brands within the Nemenchek Group. You may be familiar with some of these brands, uh, maybe AllPlan, Graphisoft, or Vectorworks, or architectural packages that are available in the United States. Um, Bluebeam, uh, obviously a PDF markup tool. SDS2 Design Data, which is a fabrication, detailing, and um, connection design package here in the United States. And today, the package that we're really going to focus on is uh, SIA Engineer. And so SIA is part of a new breed of engineering software and design programs, um, really that focuses on doing engineering design and analysis and modeling in this kind of 3D BIM workflow. And so part of that 3D BIM workflow, obviously, is not only being able to efficiently model or efficiently analyze or load the structure, but finally taking that information and putting together really usable calculation packages for whether it's um, giving to owners, whether it's keeping in-house just to have records, whether it's keeping in-house to be able to do some value engineering, or it's submitting those information uh, or those packages to uh, the necessary authorities. And so that's what we're going to talk about today in C-Engineer. Now, before we jump into our main thing, really we talk about C-Engineer and four key benefits, and we'll only focus on one of those benefits today, with that being the automatic, uh, excuse me, the automatic and coordinated documentation. And so really what we find today in the engineering workflow um, for all of us is really we have a, a coordination problem. Uh, we have a problem with coordinating data from various sources, whether it's, um, I know plenty of uh, us as engineers are creating Excel sheets or different Excel calculations that we then have to input information in manually. Obviously, we're creating Word documents when we're writing specs or um, adding general notes or whatnot to our uh, drawings or, or excuse me to our uh, calculation packages. Additionally, we're bringing in PDFs of all different types, whether they're PDFs of uh, cut sheets or whatever from architects or mechanical um, contractors so that we can appropriately include the loads for different systems. And finally, just JPEGs going out on the site, you know, having to do things during CA phase and include that information into our engineering report. And so really the, the problem or the, the workflow is really trying to coordinate all that information into one place. And so we think that the engineering report in C Engineer can be a place for you to do that. Uh, additionally, you know, we find that traditional engineering software has reporting that really doesn't provide you a lot of information. It really provides you or tends to give you a lack of transparency. That's a kind of a uh, comment that we hear a lot from engineers about uh, kind of this uh, list of finite element analysis software to say, hey, I just I can't figure out what the software is doing. I can't documented, I can't pull out usable results or graphics or pictures or, or whatnot. Um, and so taking this all, all this information and being able to use it, obviously, is a big step to being able to use the information and to, to really communicate your design. Um, so documentation is not only important um, during kind of the final stage where you're creating a report, but also can be important at, at intermediate stages, right? So if I'm looking at creating or trying to communicate you know, what the deflection or the displacements in a certain shear wall or something are. You know, we can see that, you know, uh, traditionally if you look at STAD where you kind of get just reams and reams of tabular data um, with no graphics or no, kind of no organization, it may be difficult to kind of pull out and say, okay, this is exactly what's happening. Whereas in C Engineer, because we have graphical uh, results being able to be viewed both in the user interface and in the engineering report, which we'll see um, during Nathan's part of the presentation, that allows us to really communicate this information, communicate what we're doing um, uh, as best as possible. And not only just communicate it in a table or even in a graphic, but also adding notes. You know, we could add notes or, or other things. I know for me, in my past practice, uh, one of the biggest things was dealing with uh, different pieces of data 
different pieces of information coming from different sources, having to create a PDF for all of those, having to compile that in Adobe or something like that or Bluebeam, and then having to kind of manage the changes during that process. And that always uh, t turned out to be a very arduous process and, and something that took an engineer um, a lot of time to do when really the time needs to really be spent during the engineering process running calculations, doing design, working on detailing, and then obviously in, in CA phase working on the issues and the problems that exist during construction. And so every project experiences changes, right? And so really, with in terms of this kind of coordinated documentation, it's really trying to coordinate those changes, right? And so we see all these different kind of proposals or documents or all the different times that changes can occur during the design and construction process from a conceptual design and planning phase where you have cost estimation and RFPs and you're creating final proposals and documents so you're creating different documents to schematic design where you're having to run calculations or create 3D BIM models and, and manage the changes there and so having proper documentation, having, having really a useful uh, location to be able to uh, manage those changes and, and and take a look at those changes really really can help obviously during design development uh, when you're having to do things and then finally we all know that the majority of the changes tend to happen and the majority of the changes that cost the engineering process or the design and construction process a lot of money happen during the CA phase so whether it's in shop drawings or specs or RFIs or punch list items all of these things go to um, really trying to or really trying to um, take those changes and minimize those. And so through coordination, you know, we can do that um, in, you know, being able to have better reports. So this really requires you to need something that updates your documentation maybe automatically, saving you time while reducing the concern uh, that the changes that haven't been picked up, maybe the changes that have come in, you know, that they've actually been picked up. And so how do you kind of track that? And so really um, what we need is we need a platform that allows for the engineer to solve some of these problems. So, um, you know, a platform where data can be efficiently managed, where results are usable during both design development as well as final documentation, where model changes are automatically updated in the reports, you know, kind of saving some time and energy. And so, if we look, you know, really, why is this important? This is creating documentation manually is tedious and time consuming. And so, trying to automate this is something that is very important. Obviously, the availability of output um, sometimes is difficult or creating that output is difficult. So the ability to organize that and utilize that in a design process really can help to streamline that design process. And then finally, the biggest one is changes. You know, changes are inevitable in the design process. And so additionally, you know, trying to track these changes manually um, really tends to add some time, add scope, add money to the project. And so really, how do we track these changes and then how do we make, make allow us to update these changes so that we can really minimize the number of errors. And so we think that um, the engineering report, this kind of process, can really uh, aim to solve some of these issues. And so with that kind of brief introduction, um, I wanted to mention before we jump into kind of the meat of the presentation with Nathan that if you have questions during the presentation, uh, in the uh, questions box of GoToMeeting, uh, you can ask questions. Um, I'll be monitoring the questions during uh, the presentation, uh, and we can answer some of those during the presentation uh, directly, or we can save the, some of those for the end uh, where we'll do a live Q&A session with myself and Nathan uh, to be able to answer any questions you have. And so without further ado, I want to introduce Nathan. Uh, Nathan Bissonnette is a senior engineer with Fraser Industrial Company, uh, a manufacturer of steel structural storage rack systems, um, specializing in seismic design. Nathan lives uh, out in Santa Monica, and uh, he has applied C engineer to over 100 rack installation projects since 2012. Um, and so uh, Nathan's got a really good grasp on the engineering report in SIA, and I think has some really interesting uh, stories to tell uh, in his workflows. And so now I'm going to pass it over to you, Nathan. So let me uh, give you the presenter. Hi, yes, thank you, Ben, and hello, everybody. My name is Nathan Bissonnette, uh, senior engineer with Fraser Industrial. I've been working with Ben for about five years uh, between Fraser and SIA, and I'm excited to introduce you to the engineering report in C Engineer if you haven't seen it already and also to share with you some of the workflows and processes that I've found useful 
in uh, preparing documentation of structural calculations in CA Engineer. So first I want to tell you a little bit about Fraser Industrial. Uh, Fraser is a storage rack manufacturer and we're based in Long Valley, New Jersey. Fraser has been in business since the 1950s providing storage solutions and we have 10 manufacturing sites across North America. We do all of the fabrication in those approved shops including cutting, punching, and welding and as you can see on the right hand side this is a dipping of a bundle of frames into a paint tank and then all of the materials are shipped to the site and assembled by field personnel. Just to familiarize you with some rack terminology, the product load being stored in the rack is supported on shelf beams which are attached to the upright frame by some structural bolts here. The upright frame consists of a horizontal brace, diagonal brace, and two columns which are anchored to the floor slab by expansion anchors. So today we're going to talk about analysis and rack engineering and Fraser Industrial having been in business for a long time has seen different manifestations of the code and developed a, our own um, approach to rack design. So historically it was an ASD, we use an ASD based Excel spreadsheet to check the rack designs and the column checks were done using the effective length method. And having graduated from college in 08, I was not really introduced to ASD. Most of my education was in LRFD and so um, learning to ap apply the uh, spreadsheets was informative, um, but ultimately we found that as the codes progressed and LRFD has become more popular and the effective length method has been in many ways overshadowed by a direct analysis method. And then the direct analysis method is now incorporated into the main body of the AISC specification. And it makes very good use of C engineers capabilities because the direct analysis method re relies on measuring def deflection and displacement under first order effects and imperfections in the in initial structure. So the CIA lended itself well uh, to this approach and rather than redo the design spreadsheets, we made a decision to overhaul the system and move to a 3D based model workflow. So CIA offers these four types of analysis. We have the linear to do the elastic stresses and strains, nonlinear to capture those imperfections and second order effects. The stability analysis is used to calculate buckling modes for tall or braced uh, columns and then finally the modal analysis for calculating the period of vibration and seismic design. So today I'm going to walk you through two examples. The first example is a two-dimensional rack structure. It uses a pre-populated report and updates via parameters and live pictures and then it's going to use a couple of external references to display design data and clarify the intent. The second example I'm going to show you is a three-dimensional example which uses a lot of the same functionality as the two-dimensional model but extends it for a more complex workflow. So we're going to be using a template report, activity by layer, and uh, results by name selection. And finally an integrated design form which is going to pull model um, data and input it into a customized design form. So in case you haven't heard of design forms, design forms is a standalone modeling uh, software uh, that you can program your own calculations into design forms and you can also use them out of the box. So they can either be incorporated directly into the a model workflow as I discussed or it could be a standalone uh, which can operate on its own and, and you can have things such as tables, graphs, pictures and custom libraries. So I hope I explained that well enough. Uh, you can talk to Ben more about design forms or they have uh, more information on the web page. But it's a very uh, capable tool and it's in very uh, instrumental in the use of the engineering report for us. So these are some design features which are used to organize the model. 
you've got the parameters, the template dialog, which is feeds the parameter data. Then we have layers and name selection to control how members are listed in the model for manipulation purposes and also for reporting. You can filter the results by a layer or name selection. So setting up the model ahead of time with, the, with those features is going to help out in the long run. And then we have some design features which are going to enhance the reporting, such as a title page, Excel table, pictures, and as I spoke to, design forms. So I'm going to jump into the two-dimensional example now. So this is a structure. It's a moment frame. It consists of five levels, and the levels are defined by parameters. So here, instead of having a simple coordinate numerically, we also have these tied to parameters. And so you can have multiple nodes tied to the same parameter so that when this parameter changes, it's going to change the nodal definition for everything associated with that. Similarly, you can have the loads controlled by parameters. So collecting those parameters into a template dialog makes manipulations straightforward. So I'm going to modify these shelf elevations here. And where we don't want to have a load, of, I'm going to input a zero and the overall height. Under the loads tab, I'm going to come back to this seismic response coefficient that's going to drive the base shear and input the loads at each level. On the members tab, we have the option to change members via parameters as well. So this model is set up to accept a reinforced section at the bottom, and then we could have an unreinforced section at the top, a channel material. And you can specify the height of the, of the reinforcing by parameters as well. So by clicking OK, this is now going to regenerate the model using those parameters that I've specified. So you can see it's gone from five levels to three levels. And so the, the next step here is to, uh, to, to connect the nodes together. Now after the nodes are connected, the, the member check is going to pick up those extra nodes at the bottom that I set to zero, and it's going to delete them from the model. So now we have a working connected model, and I'm ready to run an analysis. I'm going to start with the modal analysis to calculate the period of vibration, then use that period and the seismic coefficients of a given site to come up with a base shear coefficient. So right now we're just going to run a modal analysis. Now, so here's the, the subject of today's discussion is the engineering report. So I open up, this is a pre-populated engineering report. It was created using items from the item tree. This, so all of these items were inserted from the item tree. So we have uh, structural definitions, load definitions. Uh, you can do results for anything you can imagine inside of the engineer can be inserted as an item into the report. So there's nothing magic about these items. These are just um, inserted into the report and the pic a live picture is taken to capture a certain aspect of the model. So I'm going to update this because this is the displacement of, of uh, nodes for the, the mass combination. And you can see that this is showing the displaced shape under a mo the modal analysis and we have the corresponding frequencies. So if we need to look at some different modes under edit picture properties, you have the option under results to toggle between various modes of vibration. So now we can see this is mode five, which corresponds to a period of one second, but this is not the fundamental mode. So mostly interested in the 
fundamental mode. And so I'm going to lock this so that I don't need to run the modal analysis again. I have what I need. Uh, the period is going to be 1.86 seconds. I can enter now a standalone design form. So this is a, a custom design form that was is programmed to look up the seismic coefficients for a given zip code and then calculate the base shear coefficient using a manually entered period. So ma manipulating the standalone design form is easy. You just enter the uh, zip code of the location. So these zip codes are uh, tabulated into a custom library inside of the design form builder and it will look up the uh, the seismic coefficients based on the USGS parameters. And now I input the period from the modal analysis. And exiting out of the design form now, we'll save it into the report for future reference and for presentation purposes. So now I have my base shear coefficient, 0.027. I'm going to return to the template dialog and input the base shear coefficient. It's now ready to run the linear analysis and also have a stability analysis for the design of the column. So this is calculated in different buckling modes for the column and then assigning a K factor automatically to capture the effects of the column capacity in the steel check. So this is, you know, one workflow. There are many different workflows that uh, could be possible. My computer is just catching up a bit here. Okay, so we have some results, and now we can enter the engineering report. I'm going to update the entire report with the one click, and you'll notice that it goes from the five levels that were initially in the report, and now we'll have just the three levels. So there's a link between the report and the, the model, so now we have our three levels present. If you ever see this um, where the, the line grid isn't updated, you can resolve that by just opening the line grid and it will automatically refresh. So now we can see the updated diagram is, is fully exposed. We have the equivalent lateral force and vertical distribution along the structure which is coded in by parameters as well and then we have an unfactored axial load in the column. Finally the seismic moment is here. So I'd like to present this information and, and do a base plate check. And so I've left this area blank to input a Excel table and also an AutoCAD reference for a drawing. The Excel table can be copied and pasted directly in, into the report. So I'm just selecting this and performing a copy and then paste. So that's going to drop it right in there. Okay, so we can resize these. One of my favorite features is the picture size definition. Two at, at page or one at page will size this to the, to the page appropriately. And then I'm just going to move it into position by a drag and drop. So the next thing is the AutoCAD file, which is going to be inserted as a special item external picture. And we have an AutoCAD file here. I'm going to resize it to the to the page. And here now you can see the AutoCAD file is now in, in incorporated into the, into the report. And if anything were to change with this AutoCAD file it, and I regenerate it, it will automatically pick up any changes to the file. And it sets the window skit size automatically. So if you use AutoCAD in your work, it would be pretty straightforward to have an automatic incorporation of that AutoCAD file into your report. 
Finally, we have the buckling mode and the interaction check of the column. And you can change from a brief to a detailed, depending on how much information uh, you wish to see, or if you want to look at different combinations and load cases. So this, it's very flexible in its reporting capabilities. And again, this is just one example of a pre-populated report that could be used for many similar types of structures. So um, I demonstrated the Excel table, the external picture, and a standalone design form. I'd like to talk now about some model manipulations in a three-dimensional environment. So I'm going to introduce you to a 3D model that has results in it and then use a, a user template to report on, on some changes to the model. So this is a kind of a typical rack structure. Similarly, the template dialog is set up. But I'm going to start with the report. So the, the report in this case is blank. The model already has results, which is important because uh, in order to have an engineering report updated, you want to have your model results already run. So this is a user template. You can have many different user templates for different types of structures. This is just for the purposes of the presentation. So this report consists of a table of contents, some labels of the structural members, we have a side view of the frame, so we see we have a two inch diagonal and a one and a half inch horizontal, so we're going to come back to this. There's a steel check for a diagonal bracing member and a table that's associated with this for more detailed output if necessary. Then we have the cross aisle reaction. So this is how much the post would lift up during a seismic event, uh, the force on that post rather. So 8.1 kips. You can see that that 8.1 kips is automatically read by another custom design form. And this is an integrated design form. So there's not a manual input of this value. This value reads directly from the model data, which is a really neat feature and something I haven't ever seen before. So I'm going to make some modifications to this model. It's important to disconnect the nodes so that everything can move freely. Here we have the elevations. I'm going to move the elevations up a little bit. and increase the loading on the second and third levels. So we should see now in the model that the levels will be adjusted and the load weights will be adjusted as well. So you'll see that the level now goes up to the top and you can see by the arrows that the load on the top is greater than the load on the bottom. So by increasing the load, I'd like to make some, stru some structural changes to in increase the capacity of the, the frame here. So I'm going to change this, this horizontal bracing member. And this is an example of how layers can be used when they're set up properly. So under the layers, activity by layers, we, I have different layers set up for all the different members in the model. And Turning all the layers off will turn off the entire model, and I can just turn on those layers that are on the horizontals. So one, two, three, four, five would be the five different frames. So now that those horizontals are exposed, it's very simple to just select them all and change the member size. So 
Now we have the anchors. I'd like to change the anchor design that is defaulted into the report here. So right now we have a 5 eighths anchor. I'd like to upgrade it to a 3 quarter anchor. So I'm going to select the aisle column, which I know has the anchor member data associated with it, and then select all members on layer A3 using the Select Elements by Property, also known as the Lightning Bolt tool. And so that's going to select all members on the A3 layer. And then using the integrated design form, we have 1D member data associated with this design form. So this is a list of the anchors that would be available to select from. And these were, I inputted each one of these into a custom library again. Um, so it's, again, very flexible in what data you want to have available. And so let's try this uh, three-quarter inch diameter anchor. I can change the concrete compressive strength, the number of anchors, and the spacing in between the anchors, for example. So once I've updated that, the member data is now associated with those members when it goes to run that check. Now I can uh, reconnect the nodes and run the analysis. I'm only going to need to run a linear analysis for this. So I could, re I could update the report all at once, but I'm just going to go through item by item, just as an example. So th this is the beam labels. You can see that after regenerating, we now have the beam up at the top. The side view will be updated to show the new 2x2 two two horizontal member. Here we had a, a diagonal steel check. I'd like to now look at a horizontal. So I'm going to change the name. And also, I'm going to go into the picture properties. And under the results tab, change the combination to seismic in the other direction and the layer to the third horizontal. So now we should see the results for the horizontal instead of the diagonal. And I can update the table in the same fashion to show the combination number six. So I can see that once I perform this update, I am seeing a failure. And this is a this is the column. This is the channel column is at 107%. So we'll see if we can find a way to fix that. Finally, the uh, uplift here should increase based on the additional loads and, and heights. So we see the 10.7 now. And if I update the design form, we're now going to have our 10.7 and the 3 quarter inch diameter anchor that was specified. And you can see that the anchor design is, is okay after going through the pullout, the breakout, and the steel strength checks. Now, as Ben was alluding to, we have this transparency where we want to make the results very available to a plan checker or a uh, third party or myself maybe in three years when I come back and look at this. Uh, so design forms in the standalone version, you, you can have the option of including a project rather than a, a blank form. So I have a project that I've already done for this one. I'm just going to show you an example of a template here. So we could just incre include the uh, cross aisle seismic force derivation here, and by saving it into the into the report, I can scale it down for a better fit, and uh, you can see now that all of the design parameters are included in the model, including uh, how the vertical seismic forces were arrived at to clarify the, the parameters list. You, you can also include the, the, those parameters in a full list is under libraries. 
And so you, now you can see all of the different parameters that are associated with this design, which also will help with the transparency. So just going back to that column check for a second, we had at 107%. Uh, this is a, a neat feature with CO, again, that I've not seen before. We have what's called arbitrary profiles, which are one member that is consists of two different cross sections. And so if I select both of the arbitrary profiles here, rather than change the member size, I can increase the height to which the profile extends. So rather than only uh, two inches, it now goes up to 60. So I've added more reinforcing to the column without changing members or anything. And so if I rerun the linear analysis, and I return to the steel check for the column, we'll see that this should take care of that 107%. So you can see now it's down to 93%, and we could look at a more detailed out output for that particular member if necessary. So I hope that I've managed to uh, demonstrate the two-dimensional and three-dimensional capabilities of, of these uh, engineering report and design forms without giving too much away. I went over some model manipulations, such as changing the anchors in design forms, modifying the elevations and loads, changing a cross-section, and then see uh, the report manipulations to look at different member types. We have a review of checks from different load combinations and changing from a brief to a detailed output. So in conclusion, this has provided Frazier with a, an effective means of conveying design information and preparing documentation that is consistent with the inputs. We spent a long time creating these design forms, um, but the process was straightforward and the investments have paid off because now we have a pretty well integrated system and there's always room, room for improvement. So making changes to the model is, is an efficient process and you don't have to worry about inconsistencies between the report and the model because it's automatically updated and this can also be extended to different types of structures and even different co combinations of rack structures to make more complex models and then control the outputs by layers and name selections. Uh, so with that, I'm going to turn it back over to Ben and uh, thank you all for uh, your time and attention. Okay, great. Thank you, Nathan. Um, <clears throat> so uh, now we're going to open it up. Uh, we're going to open up some things to uh, to some questions. Uh, we had some questions come in. If you have additional questions at this point, um, please, by all means, put them in the questions uh, kind of chat there, and uh, we can answer some of those. Uh, but let's go ahead and start answering some of the ones that have already come in. And so the first was about bringing in reports and information from other programs. Um, obviously, you know, C is a new program to many of you, and so how do you use or bring in reports from programs that uh, maybe you're using when you're trying to integrate things. Um, the best way to do that, obviously, is through use of like Word files or PDF files. Both of those are um, are useful tools. Both of those um, have direct imports into uh, the engineering report. Uh, one of the other things that Nathan had mentioned was the Excel file. Obviously, uh, we all have Excel for files that uh, we use in, in in design right now. Um, Currently, Nathan was showing the kind of the picture, kind of making it an image and putting that into, uh, into the engineering report. Um, we have a release coming out actually in uh, just under a month. There are uh, quite a few different uh, updates for the engineering report. One of those is to be able to accept Excel files right from Excel. And so in that way, you'll be able to actually include the Excel file and then, you know, if, make changes to the Excel file just like Nathan did to the, uh, to the design forms and be able to kind of leverage those. Um, we also had some questions about um, pictures and just kind of updating pictures and paths and changes. I know Nathan went through some of that, but I wanted to spend uh, just a second uh, going through some of that uh, again uh, very briefly. And so in this uh, 
I have a, just a very simple example here. I've got kind of a deflection based on a, 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 a a load here and we can see that in the engineering reports kind of the same information here and so if we go ahead and uh, if I select uh, if I select this load here and make a change to the load let's say we just increased um, you know the value of the load to I don't know you know 200 uh, pounds per linear foot rather than the 125 you know we can go ahead and rerun the calculation now while we've done that we can see that the engineering report has already noticed that it's out of date and we can tell that obviously again like Nathan probably pointed out uh, by this kind of red exclamation point saying something's out of date we're going to need to go ahead and regenerate things so once the model keeps uh, it goes ahead and finishes certainly we can come back into the results and we could rerun the analysis and stuff or excuse me we could reshow the result but it makes the most sense in this case to just regenerate this particular picture and so here we had originally we had 0 .01, 0 0.021 uh, inches of deflection. If we go ahead and regenerate this, um, we can see it's going to update. Obviously, we have our new value here. And this is not just for um, pictures, but also for anything else in the in the new items list. The other thing that Nathan did show, and one of the other questions that somebody had about results, was what happens if I want to use uh, a secondary result? Right? I have another load case in here. I can always go ahead and edit the picture properties. And I can make changes. One of those changes to this live picture is is a result. So I can come in and change the results to say, you know what, I don't want to do my dead load. I want to look at my live load, right? And so I could either just update this particular picture. I could have copy and pasted it, obviously giving us a different result. And so we have a lot of flexibility in that sense, both with you know uh, pictures being live pictures and also um, using um, uh, tables. One of the other questions that came up, uh, this was a question a little bit more about design forms, but kind of the integration of that. Um, somebody had asked about, you know, uh, a base plate design. I know Nathan showed one that they use at Fraser. SIA also uh, has a base plate design, and so um, if you, I, I can include this in kind of the, the recording that you all get sent, but if you just search SIA and uh, base plate design, we actually have a design form that's free for download. Uh, it doesn't cost you anything. Um, and so uh, you can go ahead and download it, use uh, different types of loading, different types of members, ASD, LRFD, different types of anchorage, bolts, plate embedment, friction. All this stuff is available. And then just like Nathan did where he was showing an external design form kind of into SIA, you could obviously leverage that external base plate design form. This is kind of generally what it looks like um, into SIA engineer. And so it's possible to use that um, alongside of the, the functionality. Um, it's also possible to, somebody asked about locking of results. Uh, you can lock any result at any time. You can lock entire folders of results. Um, and so that way it's a really good way to kind of value engineer. Um, and so you can have different iterations of the model. So run one with a certain load, run two with a certain load, run three with a certain load without having to actually resave the model or change the model in, in any type of way. Um, one comment was just about the engineering report in general. It is actually... Uh, it's not a separate uh, program that you would buy. It is uh, a separate executable. So I can see here at the bottom of my screen that I have the engineering report as an EXE, an application, and SIA as an application. But it runs from within inside of SIA. And so it works only within SIA, uh, only while you have SIA open. So you don't really open it um, kind of outside and, and use it on its own. We've got a couple more questions in here. Um, and so let's see. Um, let's see. When... Um, somebody asked about uh, kind of layers, and so Nathan had mentioned layers. Nathan used layers, I think, specifically to, and Nathan, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but specifically to um, kind of group and be able to run different checks, show different uh, images and different pictures for different groupings of, of, of elements. And so layers are just a way to group um, certain elements together. This file doesn't have any layers, but layers just like, um, AutoCAD so you can put anything on certain layers and then you can run different analysis by different by layers you can show uh, different results by layers you can do different design by layers and then you can all obviously use layering as a filter to be able to show different results or different pictures in the engineering report the only thing I want to add to that Ben is you can also have name name selections which are similar to layers but you, you could group different layers together by means of name selections so you're not restricted uh, in that way. Great, yes, thank you. Um, 
Also, some people asked about specifically about some of the design functionality. Obviously, that's not really what we're uh, focused on talking about here. Um, if you're interested, certainly I can follow up with you. Some people mentioned, uh, are cold form shapes included? Yes, they are. SIA does cold form design for the AISI code and, and other Euro codes, um, so you can do that. Uh, obviously, 1D member design um, communicates with the engineering report as well. Really, any, any information, any, uh, when we go back to the engineering report, any information here in the engineering report, if I look at, for instance, concrete 1D member member design, you know, I can include the member design for the information or for a particular member in the engineering report, whether it's a graphical piece of information or in this case it would be like a table with some input and output and, and different design criteria. So all that data, everything available in the model, um, input and output wise, is available in this available items list for um, documentation within the engineering report. Um, one question, somebody just asked a question about, hey, uh, you know, I'm interested, I want to try it out. So SIA does have uh, both student and trial uh, licenses. So if you just visit our website, www.sia.net, um, there will just be a button at the very top that says free trial. You just fill out your information, and that uh, information will come to us, and we can just review it, and we'll approve it. Um, and certainly we'd like to have a conversation to figure out kind of what you're interested in and what level of functionality you need to try out. But uh, you have a, the op option to do a free 30-day tryout. Um, it's a full version of the software. The only thing is that there's a watermark in the engineering report, um, but it's, you know, there's no limitations to nodes or, or, or load cases or combinations. It's, it's a full working version for you to test out. Um, Let's see, are there any other questions? There's maybe one or two more that have come in here while we've been talking. Um, again, there's some questions about, there's some specific questions about um, the, uh, about design forms. Uh, we'll answer some of those more specific questions about kind of how you do design, how you create things in design forms. Uh, I'll, I'll follow up with those people asking those questions. Um, but really design forms is at its core uh, basically a hybrid between C Sharp and MathCAD. Um, and so it allows for kind of the simplicity of being able to just type things in MathCAD, um, but also allows for some more robust com uh, kind of computer engineering uh, features uh, that exist in uh, something like C Sharp. Nathan, I don't know if you, from your experience, obviously, you know, you've told me in the past that you like MathCAD more than using Excel. Do you have any comments just a about kind of how you can program or how you've learned to program in uh, design forms? Sure, Ben. Yeah, I think you mean I, I prefer design forms yes. over Excel. Yeah. Um, this because the the way the layout or the output is restricted, uh, you don't have to worry about locked cells and behind the scenes uh, calculations. It's really tailored to structural engineers and the integration with SIA. Um, yeah, I just I I found it and adding pictures and then updating the uh, pictures is a really handy feature. You can have uh, diagrams in in design forms that are controlled by formulas so it will actually change the diagram based on what your formulas spit out so it's a very very powerful tool yeah and I think really it comes down to um, really this ability and that filters nice into kind of this discussion about documentation it's really being able to allow you the engineer to be able to show your work for lack of a better term um, in the best way possible and so if if that's you know, so you don't have to dive into an individual cell in uh, Excel and try to figure out what's going wrong with that cell or why you're getting a wrong value. All the step-by-step -step stuff is shown in C or shown in design forms. Excuse me. You can include pictures that update. You know, that way you really um, you know exactly what's going on. But even people that you're sharing that particular design form with, they understand what's going on and understand how to use it. So um, really it's just that level of transparency that other softwares don't offer but engineers typically desire that allows design forms and the engineering report together to be a really powerful kind of documentation workflow. Um, and so I think that that kind of brings us uh, to the end of, uh, of our questions here. So uh, I appreciate uh, everybody's time. Um, certainly if you have more questions, um, feel free to contact either me, uh, if you have questions about SIA Engineer, feel free to contact me directly at uh, b.follett at sia.net. Um, you should receive a follow-up um, email um, from us anyways, just thank you for attendance. Um, you also, if you're attended, uh, you also be receiving a um, PDH credit, um, a, a 
a certificate of completion which you can use to self-document PDHs. That should come out in the next day or two once we kind of get uh, all the lists and everything kind of put into our system. And so, uh, you know, just kind of hold tight on that. It should be to you probably by early next week. Um, but if you have any other questions, please, by all means, uh, send us uh, an email or uh, get in contact with us. Um, otherwise, uh, I appreciate your time. Nathan, I thank you for your participation. And uh, we uh, hope uh, that you uh, learned something. And uh, if you want a recording, the recording will also be sent to you, but it will also be posted on YouTube in the next few days as well. So thank you very much, everybody. And uh, we thank you for your time. We hope you have a great rest of your day. And uh, if you have any interest in C-Engineer, please feel free uh, to contact me directly. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.